Hello and welcome. The focus of this lesson is on one of the critical components of any CFD simulations, the boundary conditions. Here we will understand what boundary conditions do, their classification, various options to specify boundary values and the importance of defining well-posed boundary conditions in a simulation. Without any further delay, let's get started. CFD simulation involves solving equations for mass, momentum, energy and so on and the CFD solution within the computational domain depends on flow conditions or the flow variables defined at the boundary of the computational domain. Therefore, the use of appropriate boundary conditions is essential to the accuracy of the CFD solution. Defining boundary conditions includes assigning values, choosing what boundary type to use and where to locate the boundary. These choices are important and they depend on various factors including geometry, the known flow values at the location of the boundaries and some numerical considerations related to the way the different boundary types work. Let us now look at how boundary conditions can be defined in ANSYS Fluent. Let's open ANSYS Fluent in solution mode and load the provided case file. Once the case file is loaded, go to the zones group in the physics tab and click on boundaries to open the boundary conditions task page. This task page has options to display boundaries in list view or group them by name or zone type. Let's arrange the boundaries by zone type. You can also filter them using filter text. Boundary conditions are also available under the outline view. Right clicking on a boundary brings up a context menu with options similar to that of boundary conditions task page. Click on edit to open boundary conditions panel. Boundaries are classified into two main categories, external boundaries and internal boundaries. External boundaries are those where the mesh cells are attached to only one side of the boundary. These boundaries include various kinds of flow inlets and outlets, external walls, symmetric or periodic boundaries and some spatial types which are intended to act as simplified representations of fans or vents. At the inlet and outlet boundaries, we normally specify either the total pressure or the mass flow rate or if the flow is incompressible, mass flow rate can be replaced with velocity. The most commonly used inlet and outlet boundary types are pressure inlet, pressure outlet, mass flow inlet and velocity inlet. The pressure far field boundary condition can be used to define free stream boundary conditions for external compressible flows and outflow only applies if the flow is both incompressible and fully developed at the location of the boundary. Internal boundaries are those where there are cells attached to both sides of the boundary faces. The most commonly used internal boundary types are interior and wall boundaries. When there is a wall that is an internal boundary, ANSYS Fluent automatically creates a shadow wall zone when the mesh file is read and this can be identified by the name which includes shadow with it. This is done for a two-sided wall as it makes it easier for the solver internally to keep track of the applied boundary conditions on either side of the walls. There are no explicit conditions applied at interior boundaries and the flow passes freely through it. You can also assign names to an interior boundary just by selecting a boundary and clicking on edit button. It's not required to assign a name to an interior boundary, but sometimes it can be convenient to do so to use it for post-processing. The other three internal boundary types are porous gem, fan and radiator 
but they are much less commonly used. You can change the boundary type just by selecting a boundary and choosing a different type from the list. In this demo, the inlet is set to velocity inlet, all internal boundaries to interior and the outlet is set to pressure outlet type. We have one symmetry boundary and three wall boundaries defined. To open the boundary conditions panel, select a boundary from the boundary conditions task page. Let's say inlet and now click on the edit button. The boundary conditions panel contains many inputs depending on the type of boundary selected, physics models activated in the simulation and many other factors. For the purpose of this lesson, we will limit ourselves to discussing how to input values wherever needed without getting into other specific details. Since the inlet boundary is defined as a velocity inlet boundary type, the default option is to specify constant or uniform values. Let's enter velocity magnitude of 1 meter per second. Non-uniform boundary values can be specified using expressions. An expression is a string with values, variables, functions and units. To specify an expression, select expression from the drop down in the boundary conditions panel and now you can type the expression or open expression editor by clicking on the function symbol next to the input field. The expression editor panel has more room to type and there are context menus to choose functions and variables. It also features syntax highlighting and profile plotting to make it easier to ensure that the correct expression is entered. Expressions can also be defined in the outline view by right clicking on named expressions and then click new. After the expression is created, you can directly use named expressions in the entry field. For a detailed discussion on the usage of expressions, please refer to our lesson on expressions. Another way to enter boundary conditions is to left click on a boundary in the graphics window. This opens a quick property editor panel which includes entries for most important settings making it easy to type in values. Note that the values entered here are immediately reported in the console. There is no undo button for these values. It reports both old and new values in the console to help revert changes if required. You can also click on more button to open the boundary conditions panel. Boundary conditions for multiple boundaries of the same type can be defined at the same time using multi edit feature. You can use the control key and select multiple boundaries of the same type in the outline view. Here let's select walls then right click and select multi edit from the context menu. This opens a multi edit panel where you can define the desired boundary conditions for all the boundaries that are selected in the zone list. Let's say we want to modify temperature values for both wall 1 and wall 2. For that, let's click on thermal tab. Select temperature under thermal conditions. Set temperature to 0 degree Celsius. Select wall 1 and wall 2 under the zone list and click apply. To revert changes, you can click on the green check mark before clicking apply. Boundary conditions can be copied by clicking on the copy button. This only works between boundary conditions of the same type. Let's say we want to copy wall 1 boundary conditions to wall 2. In the copy conditions panel, select wall 1 under from boundary zone, wall 2 under two boundary zones. Now click copy and select OK. Boundary conditions can also be transferred from one case to another case using copy to clipboard feature. Right click on the boundary conditions in the outline view and select copy to clipboard from the context menu. And then navigate to other case, right click on the boundary conditions in the outline view and say paste. You can also copy and paste this to Excel 
or to use it as text file right click on boundary conditions and select export to file option. Fluent uses a tab separated values format or TSV and you can just enter a name for the file and then click OK. Now navigate to the other case, right click and select import from file and then the TSV file is available to select. If you have two Fluent sessions open at the same time, then it is possible to drag and drop the boundary conditions from one case onto another case and there are two different methods for doing so. In the first one, click and hold the boundary conditions branch and drag it onto the other case and click OK to perform this drop operation on the boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are applied to boundaries in the target session that have names which match exactly with the names of boundaries from the source session. If there are boundaries in the source model which are named differently or there are more boundaries or any other differences, those boundaries will be ignored in the drop operation. It only works for boundaries with identical names and the changes are shown in the console. Note that before copying boundary conditions from one case to another, it is recommended to activate all relevant physical models before performing the copy operation. If a model is not enabled in the receptor case, its related boundary conditions will not be copied. The second method is to drag one boundary onto another, which will force both the boundary type and the settings onto the boundary where it is dropped, but the names do not have to match. We can see this by dragging one of the walls onto the inlet. The inlet is now changed to wall with the same wall thermal boundary condition applied to it. So far, we discussed the various ways to specify values at boundaries. Another important aspect when specifying boundary condition is defining well post boundary conditions. The boundary conditions applied should be both physically meaningful and consistent with the mathematical formulation of the applied boundary type. For example, when defining a pressure outlet boundary for flows involving recirculation zones near the outlet boundary, the ideal location for the boundary would be downstream of the recirculation zone and not in the recirculation zone due to the mathematical formulation of the pressure outlet boundary condition. Here are some of the well posed combinations of boundary conditions for simulations involving one inlet and one outlet. For an incompressible flow, the combinations of velocity inlet and pressure outlet or mass flow inlet and pressure outlet provide robust convergence. For a compressible flow, the combination of mass flow inlet and pressure outlet provides robust convergence. In any of these cases, the mass flow rate is directly or indirectly specified and the total pressure at the inlet adjusts to accommodate the specified value. Note that the combination of pressure inlet and pressure outlet can be used for any flow and in this case, the mass flow rate through the inlet adjusts to accommodate the specified total pressure. In some cases, using this combination leads to the rate of convergence being sensitive to the initial condition. There are also some combinations to avoid. These include the combination of pressure inlet with the outflow, which does not guarantee a unique solution. For the same reason, the combination of outflow and mass flow inlet should not be used unless the density is constant. It's also not recommended to use velocity at both the inlet and the outlet because the system could become numerically unstable if the resulting flow rates do not match identically. Let's summarize what we learned in this video. We discussed what boundary conditions are, their classification and the need to define appropriate boundary conditions in the computational domain. We learned how to access the boundary conditions panel, how to copy boundaries, change boundary type, specify boundary values using expressions and quick property editor panel. We explored the multi-edit feature and the different ways of transferring boundary conditions from one case to another. Lastly, we also discussed the importance of defining well-posed boundary conditions 
and the recommended combinations. With this, let's wrap up the lesson.